Hey everyone, my name is Ash and in today's video we'll be going over new ways that you might not have heard about to make your Roblox Studio scripts even better than they were before. We're going to go over two programming paradigms today, object oriented programming and functional programming, which you might not have heard of, you might have, if you have that's great. Now the idea behind a programming paradigm, it's almost like a model that's used to structure your layout of code. So if you're just coding in loads of scripts and it's all messy and you can't access anything, you don't really have a good programming paradigm, your model is not going to be great is it? But if you have some sort of structured ordered layout like one of the two methods I'll show you in this video your scripts are going to be much more efficient your games are going to be much more efficient which means they're going to run much more smoothly now the first one that I mentioned earlier that we're going to go through is functional programming and functional programming is in the name it uses functions inside functions you call functions based on other functions and it allows you to reduce the amount of code you have to write it's really efficient and it's really handy in Lua because there's a lot of things in Lua that allow you to use functional programming now a lot of you might not have heard of functional programming that which is completely fine we'll get into the basic concept of it with a few examples trust me you're going to want to know what this is and how it works because it is game changing for your roblox script you won't script the same after this video okay so for the first example let's delete the oop for the first example of how we're going to learn functional programming, we're actually going to use a list of numbers and we're going to want to square all the numbers and also, and also negate them. Now, if you think about a normal solution for this, you're going to need two for loops or one and then you're going to have to negate and then square, negate, square, negate, square. And it can look quite ugly and I want to have a good way of making it so you don't have to write a for loop every time you want to loop through a list. Now, what functional programming allows you to do is it allows you to pass in a function into another function and run through that function and I'll explain it here with these two examples. So the first example I want to explain is this square of the numbers and we have a function here called square and this function returns uh, x times x which is the number and it is just the square of the number. Pretty simple. We'll ignore this one for now, the negation. Now how can we square all these numbers? Of course you need a for loop. So what I've done is I've created a new module script and if you don't know what a module script is, to keep it simple, a module script, this purple one here, is uh, uh, it is a piece of code that you can call from another script and return that batch of code. So in this module script called for loop module, I have a table that is returned by this return statement. So when I call require script dot for loop module, it returns the table. Module scripts are a good way of storing stuff in Lua and uh, gathering data as well. So how does functional programming actually work? Well, this is where we get into the juicy stuff. What I want to do is call the table. So this gives me the table, the require. I then want to do the dot pairs for loop which in my for loop module is this function here pairs for loop is set to a function and then this is where the functional programming happens you pass in the function that you want to complete and then you also pass in the list of numbers or the parameter or whatever you want to pass in now for this example it would call this pairs for loop and it passes in the function which is our square function and it also passes in the numbers list this will then go through and replace each of the number with the function of that number so this is the index of of the number in the table and this is the function which we passed in with the square of that number so it replaces each number with the square of the number this is an example because we can use it with many other functions as you see we've got this negation one which will make all the numbers negative so if I click run here I'll show you what I mean so this first table here is our first table here our uh, square numbers so this should return our square numbers as you see 1 4 9 and 16 and our second one should show the negative of those numbers so as you can see by just putting our for loops in here we We've actually only used one for loop for negation and square and you can do a lot with this usually you write a lot of for loops for a different amount of things but you can combine it all into one single for loop and you only have to run this for loop here or this one depending on what for loop you want to run functional programming makes it really easy to pass in a function into the for loop and then run the function in the for loop so that you don't have to keep writing out for loops all the time you can do the same with while loops you can do the same with functions as well so this is a really powerful tool allowing you to reduce the amount of for loops and disgusting code that's in your Roblox script. Now the second and final programming paradigm that I want to go over is the object oriented programming method. This structure allows objects to be created and it was it's in the name object oriented and this allows you to really reduce the amount of code that you have to write because everything's in module, everything's written much neater, you can use multiple objects for the same thing and it's a really powerful tool combined with functional programming to make some really really efficient 
efficient script. So how I want to show object oriented programming to you is with an example of reversing a list. So let's say we have our list here nums 1, 2, 3 and 4 and we want to reverse it to be 4, 3, 2, 1. Now the easiest way to reverse a list is with two stacks. And if you don't know what a stack is, I'll give an example on the screen. A stack is a last in first out data structure. So basically let's say you've got the number 3, you put the number 3 at the bottom of the stack, place it on the stack. Uh, then you've got number 2, you put number 2 on the stack and then you put number 1, you put number 1 on the stack and it goes on like that. It's like a bucket almost and then let's say you want to take a number off the stack. You take the number 1 off the stack and then you take the number 2 off the stack so on and so forth. And this is how a simple stack works and it's a really really useful data type in a lot of algorithms. But for reversing a list there isn't really a useful reversing script default in Lua uh, that I know of. Uh, let me know if I'm wrong in the comment but we can easily create a reverse script with two stacks. Now this is my stack module, my stack class and we're going to call them classes because they are objects, they are, they are classes of things. So for example it could be a person, that is a class of a thing, uh, it could be a fruit and they can all be replicated using a simple line of code in Lua. So these are the methods for the stack and you don't really need to memorize these methods, these are just what makes the stack work, you don't need to know any of this for now. I will put the code, all these programs I will put in the description so you can play around with them and in the next video we will have a go at making our own player class for a game. But for now all you need to know is that object oriented programming is basically when you create objects which are classes. So in my example here I have a little table that has two stacks, a start stack and our reverse stack. This will be our end stack. So we're looking for 4, 3, 2, 1 in this reverse stack. In our start stack we're going to require the stack module because this is our class and we're going to pull the dot new constructor and in the stack class when we create our new class in the next video you will see that you need a constructor, you need to have a method that builds the object and that's what this constructor is. That's what a construction worker does right? Constructor. So this basically instantiates a new stack and same here with the reverse stack it instantiates a new stack. These two are different. These two are not the same. This guy can have a different size so this guy can have the size of four and this guy can have the size of seven and they would be two different stacks. Now I've called the push function on the start stack three times here but I want to call it four times because I want to add a number four that be in line with our number list. There we go we pushed number four onto the stack. Now I have it outlined here the method that we're going to use to print the reverse stack but I want to go through it with you guys to make sure you understand what's going on here. So we've added four numbers to the stack and on the right hand side of the screen you will see what our stack looks like visually at the moment. So to make this work and to reverse our list all we need to do is take out the numbers from the start stack and put them in to the reverse stack. And as you can see by this little animation on the screen this is what would happen. The list would reverse itself as you can see it's upside down. Now I'm actually going to use my functional programming that we learned earlier in the video to make this work and it is down here if you want to skip to the end. If not you can follow through if it's uh, a little bit difficult because it is a little bit uh, difficult to wrap your head around first time but we want to print and we want to print the table. We need to make a function that we can pass into our for loop for our functional programming because as you should remember you have to pass in the function and then pass in the parameter with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass in this function here that I created earlier called reverse stack item and x is just the stack table which is here and that gets passed in as a parameter when we call the for loop. We haven't called the for loop yet and i is the index that we're at in the for loop. i is usually indicates index and what we want to do is push the value that gets popped from the start stack and that value gets pushed onto the reverse stack and, uh, and then we return the stack table. So if that made no sense just give me a sec let's write it out. What we want to do we want to require our for loop module. So now we've required our for loop module basically this now gives us the table that is in our for loop module. We can either choose from our for loop or our pairs for loop. Now I want to choose for loop here because I'm iterating over a table that has a table inside of it or more data. So now what do we pass into this for loop? Obviously we need the function which is called func and you can see it there on the prompt. So our function is the reverse stack item and we don't pass it in like this uh, because otherwise it calls the function and it, we would pass in the return value. We need to pass it in like this uh, so it's just passing in the actual function. Next we need to pass in the parameters and the parameters is going to be the stack table. We need to pass in the stack table and we also need to pass in the size. So we're going to pass in the size of our start stack table. Stack size is just in the stack and 
constructor. You don't need to worry about that. It was created with the class. But that's one of the positives about object oriented model is that you can create your own variables within your own classes and store different data for different objects. This will return our parameter because that's how I've got it set up in here. It will return our parameter. It will return the stack table. So I need the reverse stack out of there. So I need to get the reverse stack and I want to get the stack uh, so I can see the list of numbers right at the end. We test this now. What I want to do is test to see if start stack flips uh, to reverse. So what I want to do is print out the start stack, stack table dot start stack dot stack because I want to see whether it flips the numbers. So let's run this. So this is our start stack, our one, two, three, four. They've all been pushed on to the stack. 4 would be the top number on the stack. And this one here, the line 37, will be our reverse. 4, 3, 2, 1. So as you can see, it's completely reversed and you've done it with uh, one for loop. And this for loop could be used for anything. I mean, this is a really efficient way of writing only one for loop for multiple different purposes. And that is the power of object-oriented programming and functional programming. They allow you to do so many useful things, especially when you intertwine both of them. You get some really efficient code and it's really neat and tidy. And you could even put all of this into a function where you push x and then put it into the for loop. I'll do it now. So I've created this function that pushes onto the start stack and x would be the stack, i is the index or the number we want to put in the stack. And you create this function. What I want to do instead of this, I want to wire for loop module and I want to do a for loop and I want to push onto stack without the brackets. And the parameter that I want to put in is the stack. So I want to go stack table dot start stack and the number is four. Now what this should do is it should do the same thing that we just did there by so instead of printing out four pushes we create this function that pushes like that and then we get our for loop that we've already used down here so we've used it twice now and we just push it onto the stack now i did make an error here and it's a good thing to know when you reference a function from a class you need to use the colon so that it passes the class object in with the function it uses the function from that specific class object otherwise if you put a dot here it will try and use the class function without the object and it will get confused and you'll lose all your data from your object. So make sure you use a colon unless it's the dot new because the dot new is creating a new self object. And of course we have to return the parameter out of the function as well because that's how the for loop is set up. Now we've run it, we've got no errors and hopefully everything will run as we did before we set up the functional programming with the pushes. These two bottom tables here, we have our start stack which is one, two, three, four, and we have our reverse stack as well. Look at that. We've just used one for loop for what you would usually use for two because usually you'd have to write out a for loop to create the stack and push on the numbers into the table and then you'd have to write another for loop to reverse the list but in this case you don't you only have to write this one and you can use it as many times as you want due to functional programming furthermore this is a very efficient way to code a for loop has a runtime of o n if you don't know what big o notation is please skip this part there'll be timestamps a singular for loop like this will have a runtime of o n and so does this one which means this whole thing has a runtime of o n because everything else here has a complexity of o one there's no for loops inside a for loop or any recursion or anything like that. And in the stack, they're all a runtime of big O1. This is a really efficient way to reverse lists, to get square numbers, to reverse your numbers or inverse the numbers. And I know Lua has a math.square and, 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 and all of that, but this is just showing you the bare bones basics of how to program like this because it's a really effective way of programming. And if you can use this in your programs and games, then your games will run really smoothly. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you how to create a player class where you can store player data, the player's name, player is money for a game. And I'm going to show you how to do that with a class using object oriented programming model. We might even use some functional programming as well. So if you did learn something today, please leave a like. Comment any questions that you have about this. It is a spooky ass topic. I'll put a link to the playlist in the description so you can watch all the videos based on the. There's going to be loads about algorithms, data types, everything you can use to make your code more efficient and more tidy like we have today. Hopefully you understood everything in this video. If you did, please do let me know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.